I'd like to talk about Adam Parfrey and his legacy. He recently died, um, supposedly yesterday. And um, this is interesting because I really only got to Adam Parfrey when he was on a podcast with Robert Stark last year with me, uh, Robert Parfrey, and J.G. Michaels. From what I knowed from him before, I knew him as um, not much really about him other than the fact that he was the editor of a book called Apocalypse Culture, and that his publishing house was Feral House. Now, there is a lot to say about Parfrey's legacy, uh, certainly. He's uh, one of those uh, weirdo fringe types. He's one of those uh, despicable people that if you meet in person, you, you like him and you find him fascinating. But then when you meet and then when you meet him in person, he's like this really uptight, agitated, self-destructive person. Um, but in a way, um, he has a very important scene with the whole Hatesville crowd. Um, he basically, in a, in a whole thesis, and including to his Wikipedia article, he was one of the avant-garde writers that decided to challenge the liberal paradigm by forcing liberals to open up to forbidden areas of knowledge, or knowledge that may cause offense, in other words, shock art. Um, he said that true, true pursuit of knowledge is understanding a serial killer manifesto. And that got him in a lot of trouble when he did publish the Ian Brady uh, book, uh, with the forward by Colin Wilson and afterward by Peter Sotos. But why did he publish it and get into that whole dispute? Because the pursuit that people need to read this, right? It's like there was this one Jewish um, journalist who uh, published the, the Turner Diaries and uh, got that out because he wanted other liberals to understand this is how the mind of a neo-Nazi works. Same when Abe Boxman writes the foreword to Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf. It's where this passive-aggressive trans transgressive art, you know, it's, we won't really mean it, you know, we're, we're not sincere, you know, but just take a look at it. But, you know, it's like if you're in the band Anal Cunt, you know, there's some Antifa that will like an anal cunt because they think they're sincere with their words. Or is anal cunt just a band that loves to tick off people? And that's it. There's nothing more deeper. They say they're satire, but they just like offending people. And, um, you know, it's weird to think that, you know, 20 years ago, you got to remember something. Adam Parfrey was also a musician of the sort. And uh, he had his album, A Sordid Evening of Sonic Sorrows, which was his attempt at uh, a Deaf in June or this neo-folk guitar weird publishing, you know. And, and it's weird because this, this whole scene, um, they love the fort with like 1960s art and liberal ideals. And... Um, it's weird because it's 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 just, it's like almost a joke in itself. It's um, it, it's this whole. They want to cause shock art in favor of you, the viewer, to feel hate, right? There's no reason. It's just there's no satirical. There's no ridicule. It's I hate you because I hate you, and I'll hate you to a point where. There is no uh, reason why. I just hate you. And if, if you're feeling you are hated, then I've done my job. And that, that's what Parfrey really belongs to. Um, now, wait, now, um, hold on. I think, um, wait, hold on. I was just looking up something real quick. Now, um. My experiences with Adam Farfrey on the internet, I remember being very curious because before then I knew him talking with Peter Sotos on the, the Quimby Books podcast. This is what I really knew him as the his agent. And um, now 
I'm going to look at some of my old emails I have with Adam Parfrey. I was in uh, email back and forth with him. Um, let's see, Adam Parfrey, Adam Parfrey, Adam Parfrey. Yeah, he was a very... Um, Here's, a, here's an email from March 8th, 2017, Adam Parvery wrote to me. I will forward an email you make out to Peter Sotos, but will not get back to him again if he fails to reply to your request. I'm a bit surprised that you are interested in having a radio prowl again with decent sound. And, um, let's see. I also have, um, from his phone number about being on I, yeah so so I have some weird notes about Parfrey um, but here, here's the thing Parfrey was again he's he was his father was Woodrow Woodrow uh, his father was Woodrow Parfrey who was an actor so he came from that scene of uh, movies acting, the eccentric upbringing and privilege of doing whatever you want. Uh, he was definitely a part of that New York scene, and it shows you that he had this eccentric thing about him. I just remembered, uh, you know, when we did that podcast, Parfi was like bitching about the, 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 the sound of the podcast when really it was his reception on some payphone he was using. And he said it wasn't good enough, right? He was saying it wasn't good enough for him to be posted online. Now that he's dead, who the fuck cares? But it's there. It's on my YouTube channel. I'll link it below. And really, I think what was the point why he didn't like it was because I was addressing him hard questions and hard facts about the books he published. Whether that is Yeah Yeah Girls or American Hardcore or Occult Rituals, it seems like Parfrey was publishing books to deliberately agitate the public and its viewers. And I kept bringing up Peter Sotis as this, you know, cheese pizza child porn ideal, you know, Pizzagate. <laughs> and he kept dodging it every time with this whole ideal of liberalism. You have to be smarter than that. You have to look in the text. It's it's more than that. And I remember asking J.G. Michaels after the show, well, Michaels, why is Parfrey dodging my bullets? This is really agitating me. Why is he not addressing these in fact? It's almost as if he has this queer personality and doesn't want others to know what he's really doing. And J.G. Michaels said, well, you just have to talk to Parfrey in person and maybe he'll open up. And I think Parfrey was agitated on his behalf because he expects you to like his art that he puts out as well. But again, how can I really like a person who deliberately is like Jim Goad and wants to shitstorm, you know? And so you just have to talk to him in that way that he is shitstorming. Um, but anyway, those were just some of my experience. Other than that, I remember clearly... On Facebook, Adam Parfrey would constantly be in Facebook connections with uh, J.G. Michaels and Anster Zinger, back and forth with Facebook posting. Uh, I, re I also remember um, sending on Facebook Adam Parfrey, hey, I'm going to start this new website called apopculture.com. Would it be okay to use my stuff? And he's like, yeah, sure, uh, go ahead. I remember, I'm, I'm just bringing this. Maybe I can look this up real quick on my Facebook and see what Adam Parfrey um, exactly wrote to me. Now that this stuff is should be <laughs> now that sorry my Facebook feed. Um, hold on. Just opened up the fa the FB. Okay. Okay. See if I can. So I was starting a going to start a new blog called A Pop Culture, and you know that would be 
Let's see, last time you wrote was on April the 5th. And yeah, last message you wrote was on April the 5th. So I said, okay, here's the medal. So this was from September 17th, 2017. Hello, Mr. Parfrey. I'm about to start a new blog. It's about my love for strange books. Would it be okay to call my Bob a blog Apocalypse Culture as a tribute to your book? Do you see the title Apocalypse Culture as a generic term, as a manifesto cultural movement, or a trademark of your own voice? Uh, a day later, he wrote this. I uh, came up with the title, and people said that it should be Apocalyptic Culture, but I disagreed. Uh, people might be confused with your title if I'm not involved with its production. And I replied back to him. And then some bot later got back to me and wrote, Thanks for your friend request, but due to already having too many friends, I can't friend you as well. However, if you like Feral House, you might as well get both recordings um, served for now. So some bot came in, actually, when I was sending Parfree an actual... So maybe apocalyptic culture is something that I can avoid the trademark and evolve it. But now that Parfrey's gone, it's he has no control of that. And it definitely, definitely would be a nice tribute to him. Well, you know, other than that, I think also as well the... Um, hold on. Boom. Bop. Boom. Boom. All right. Oh boy. Well, what was I thinking about? Okay. So, other facts I know about Parfrey. I think Parfrey was involved in a relationship with Margot Metroland of Countercurrents. I've heard this uh, talk in a certain discourse with Margot. I don't know what the relationship was. But that is certainly fascinating. Um, other than that, um, Greg Johnson keeps a foot away from Parfury as well. I wonder why. And um, I, 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 maybe I could say something, instead of saying tidbits from what I know, maybe I could say something about what Parfury has done. Um, yes, it's weird to, it's weird on the fact that Parfrey has made a pretty much 90s generation latex following that could be followed from normie to hipster normie of the first to really get out fringe books. Whether you're a young person that likes shock art, you have no political affiliations whatsoever, but you want to know about the secrets of Genes and aliens rule the world. Look for no further than Feral House. And th th that kind of um, that kind of theme goes with this idea of um, it, it, it's, 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 it's this idea. I'm trying to find the words here that you or or, or Feral House. You know, there are still people like normal people that read Feral House have this fascination. There are people who read Peter Sotos who are into punk rock but don't like any of the politics. They're apolitical. They're like Andrea Dorkin fans. And he was actually, in a weird way, Parfrey believed in the book industry, but he wanted his book industry to be about shock jock art. You know, He wanted his industry to be forbidden our knowledge and to test you as an individual so you you're you know and that was kind of this punk rock ideal of things you know and now we could see that there's other now from his legacy we have jim goad's answer me we have gavin mcginnis's vice magazine that came from that tradition and through hardcore ideals about what should offend people we have chip smith's nine banded books See, those, that's how influential, like, this thing goes about. I mean, when I was in community college, I had a magazine called Fringe Magazine. I was really just talking about moon denial, Holocaust denial, just because I was influenced in those things for the sake of challenging the liberal mind. 
Now, I just don't want to say Parfrey is all that. You know, he's challenging the liberal mind. Parfrey also had a very interesting, how should I say, 1950s, 60s aesthetic about him. Um, uh, you know, whether it's Jim Goat, Adam Parfrey, Sean Partridge, uh, Boyd Rice, they have this hippie image about them. They love flirting with Beatnik. Um, Beatnik, 50s, Lava Lamps, Rubik's Cubes, Peter Max, acid style of like rainbows and kind of what Def and June did with, and how he found like the black sun in alt-right imagery, using it as collage art. Now it's kind of stupid that there's a whole fad on the alt-right of uh, Siege Tards, um, you know, read Siege, you know. But Siege was closely associated with that that shock art scene of apocalypse culture. Um, I really think Boyd Rice's Hatesville together um, gets the scene into one album, you know, like one magnus opus. You know, not just a, I, I was thinking that would be a good name to call uh, something of the, the Hatesville people. Um, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, there's a lot of people who are also, you know, if you open up Answer Me or Feral House, there are people who all know each other, but they go, they're underground about it. They don't like bringing up this shit, you know. They, they find they'd rather be these, like, weird, eccentric people working under the covers, whether, I think it's to some extent Greg Johnson countercurrents is like that, but he was more... Uh, honest with his intentions, but none of these people uh, would like to have a collective. All these people hate each other equally, you know, through toil and hard work, they're all just like, uh, you know, shitting on each other. And uh, I'm trying to look at more people who are involved with the album. <laughs> Michael Astra. That's true. Yeah, some of these people I know I've not have not mentioned. Three Slayer Hippie. Steve Hardford, Hanford. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of um, interesting stuff. Um, it's funny. I mean, Hatesville is hilarious. I love it. Um, but... You know, it's this, uh, hold on. Okay. So, you could say that the documentary film, American Hardcore, was brought to existence through Parfrey's publishing house, American Hardcore. That is a very important film as well as he wanted to discuss about that. I mean, there's also some really cheesy books now on Feral House, and Feral House has declined in quality, such as The Mocking of Far Right, where we can study the far right but not be far right ourselves. This is kind of the weird liberal individualist thing, you know. It, it gets kind of cliche, and it becomes literally uh, hipsterism, and, and that, which is okay, which is okay. It's just, it's a matter of Parfrey saying that's the truth, but he doesn't want to admit because he's such a character. Um, these weird, psychotic, uh, beatnik, mafia, movement. Yeah, you know, it's like, a, it's like a, almost like this weird late baby boomer, early Gen X thing from an entire different world. It's, it's very fascinating. Um... Uh, I'm going to retweet that. <laughs> I'm just on Twitter now. But what can I say? Um, R.I.P. Adam Parfrey. His eccentric behavior, now that he has died, a lot of people now have to mourn and think about what his legacy on this earth was. Was it more than apocalypse culture? Was it just this bizarre you know, way of, no, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm looking at more Parfrey links, um, I'm just looking at, huh. oh, wait, yeah, sorry, I was looking at Jody Will Willie's, his first wife, you know, 
there's a lot to, you know, it's, it's a lot of this, a lot of this stuff that's supposedly underground needs to be known by the public. They simply can't just be a jerk circle known for this in crowd, right? As Parfrey once said to me, perhaps I'm a normie, but this isn't good enough for me, you know?